please forgive me. I have to ask this question since I'm given the opportunity. <laughs> since since you're the master of um, risk and return, um, recently quantitative investors have not done as well as you have, but there are certain um, places like Renaissance that still have an edge. How, how do you believe that they maintain their edge? Well, the quant firms have uh, techniques that have been honed over a long period of time. And they also have, in many cases, access to markets that other people don't have. For instance, they can trade in microseconds. And so they can trade faster than normal people can trade. They also have algorithms which show them how to shop in the marketplace and try to figure out a little bit about what's going to happen in the very short term, one way or another, in each stock. And the exchanges, I believe, give them access briefly, 30 milliseconds or so, I may have changed by now uh, what the rules are, to uh, the book, the order book. And if you can see the order book, uh, you can win, uh, just remorselessly and inevitably. There was a a uh, high-frequency trading firm called uh, Virtue, which decided it would go public. And so it issued a prospectus. Prospectus is a document that spells out all the risks and all the things that they're attempting to do and so forth. So they, they reveal a lot of details. And what Virtue revealed was that for about the last 1,300 trading days, they had won every day except one, every day. And the one day they didn't win was because they had a computer problem. <laughs> so uh, certain players have access to have inside access to the marketplace, and or lots of algorithms and uh, experience, which gives them a substantial edge. Now Jim Simons, who built Renaissance, uh, arguably arguably the most successful hedge fund ever. Uh, he spent about 20 years in the wilderness trying to figure out how to do all this with all kinds of false starts and mistakes and upsets and emotion and so on. And then finally, around 1988 or 1989, uh, he got a guy named uh, Elwin Burlikamp, a good mathematician uh, uh, since deceased up at UC Berkeley, who I talked to on the phone at some length about all this uh, a little later, who helped Renaissance really turn around and hit high profitability. Uh, Berlicamp and uh, Simons didn't get along too well. So it may be an ego problem, I, I, I'm not sure, but in any case, um, Berlicamp asked Simons to buy him out, which he did for six times what Berlicamp put in, and then Berlicamp went back to math at uh, UC Berkeley. Uh, and then Simons hired other people after that uh, code breakers, mathematicians, computer scientists, and so forth. And with this team of people trying various things, they got better and better and better. And there's a book out called uh, The Man Who uh, Solved the Market. It's coming out in a couple of weeks. Random House is having a party for it. Random House happens to be my publisher. They're having a party for it uh, in New York uh, downtown. I think, I'm not sure what day, 18th, 19th, November, something like that. It's, it, it's an interesting book because you see all the human pain and suffering and struggle and failures as well as what turned out to be really glorious at the end. And by the way, one of the interesting things about this book is uh, Simons has been a great contributor to mathematics and to education. But it all got canceled out because he had uh, a fellow named Robert Mercer working for him as is one of his number twos. Robert Mercer um, created something called Cambridge Analytica, oh. <laughs> and they did tr trial runs, I think, on Brexit and other things, and they were able to greatly influence the 2016 election, and they were on the side of uh, the current president. So they 
are believed to have made a crucial difference. If they had not been in the game, uh, the election would have gone the other way. So Simons is, I'd, I'd say, a liberal Democrat. Mercer is an extremely conservative uh, Republican slash libertarian. And so his impact on the world was greater, unfortunately, in my opinion, than uh, Jim Simons. You never know how things are going to go. 